Hey guys, this is C.S. Joseph. Uh, today we're going to be talking about another of the uh, eight cognitive functions. It, today is uh, extroverted sensing, which is uh, living in the moment or mechanical awareness, uh, short-term memory access, uh, just along those lines. Uh, it's one of the uh, four perceiving uh, cognitive functions. We've been talking about the uh, four decision-making or judging cognitive functions. And today's is extroverted sensing for that purpose. So people who have extroverted sensing, there's eight of the 16 types that have them. Uh, they are uh, these types. So, uh, these eight types are what I call extroverted sensing users. It's because extroverted sensing, the function is in the uh, top four of the cognitive functions in their head. So that means like in their ego, extroverted sensing is one of the four. And uh, it's basically these people are the ones that like constantly live in the moment, focus on the now, live in the now, bro, that whole thing, that's extroverted sensing. Uh, it also gives them the ability to manipulate the physical realm or physics as we know it, which gives them mechanical aptitude. For example, people have expert sensing hero or parent. They're extremely good at mechanics. That could be using tools or uh, fixing cars uh, or motorcycles, anything to that uh to that way of doing, even a, a network uh, in an IT uh, data center that could be all done using expert sensing. So someone who has expert sensing, it's like they're just always aware of what other people are doing. And in that vein, uh, they are able to see into what other people are doing so that they know what they want to do. Why is that? It's because introverted intuition, which is another of the perceiving cognitive functions, is connected to extroverted sensing in an axis. So people see with extroverted sensing what other people are doing right now so that they know what they want to do later. Or they know what they want and then they want to give other people an experience. And that's what extroverted sensing users do. They give other people an experience. This even translates to sexually in the bedroom. Extroverted sensors are usually people on the top and introverted sensors are people on the bottom because extroverted sensing wants to give sensation while introverted sensing wants to receive sensation. So extroverted sensing is all about giving sensation. Uh, also, uh, it's like short-term memory. Uh, a computer has random access memory uh, or a hard drive, right? Introverted sensors are like a hard drive, whereas extroverted sensors are the RAM in in a computer. So how, how does that look? So you have memory, right? And they're very, very good at keeping that memory in their head, but new information comes in and pushes the old information out. It's not written the hard disk. The reason is, is because Wherever your extroverted sensing slot is in your top four functions, that means you have an introverted slot, introverted sensing slot in the lower functions. Introverted sensing is long-term memory, expert sensing is short-term memory. So that means if you have lower long-term memory, that means you're forgetful basically. So if you have expert, if you're an extroverted sensing user, one of these uh, types, figure out how to like not bump the camera one day, not today though. Uh, if you're one of these types, you're an expert sensing user, which means you're likely forgetful. Uh, especially the ENTJ, the ENFJ, the INTJ, and the INFJ, those are, in my opinion, the most forgetful of all the types because they have lower extroverted sensing capability in their head because it's in their third or fourth slot in their ego, uh, which basically means their introverted sensing is in the second to last slot or the last slot, making them forgetful, basically. And those, uh, which is funny as well, because those within the third to last slot, also known as the critic slot, uh, if there's introverted sensing there, like with the ISTP or the ISFP, they swear so much that they have the memory of an elephant, but consistently they don't. They actually don't. They can't remember anything, and it's really frustrating. And even though they claim they can remember everything, they really can't. So you're forced to keep track of what they say and what they do 
so that you can show them a log later of what they are actually forgetting and prove it to them to their face. And then they'll get really angry at you that you did that. But, well, I mean, that's what they get for being prideful about it, I guess. So expert sensing is all about giving sensation. It's about manipulating the physical environment. It's about uh, uh, being aware of what's happening right now uh, and... It's also like mechanical awareness, being able to utilize tools. So that kind of just sums up how extroverted sensing works. And uh, like if someone's high expert sensing, they're always just like, they're that guy when you're at the office, he's always like in your cube trying to see what you're doing all the time. It's especially frustrating if you have like an ISTP or an ESTP boss, for example, or even ESFP or ISFP boss and they're always going to ask you what you're doing. They're always going to look at what you're doing, no matter even if you look productive or not, because they always have to be aware of what you're doing. Otherwise, they feel like they don't know what they're doing or they don't know what they want to do. So they're constantly trying to figure out what they want, but the only way that they can do that is if they know what you are doing. And it's like the most annoying thing in the world, but that's how the mind works for those people. So we just have to get used to it and kind of live with them on it. You know, and that's one of the disadvantages of it, but there are some other advantages. Um, Experted sensing basically makes these people like really realist focused. They think themselves like, especially the ESTP, which people would claim is the ultimate realist. Uh, SP types, they're so focused on the moment and living in the moment and not really planning anything out. They kind of take the day as it comes to them. And, so, you know, they are not happening to their day. Their day happens to them. And they kind of just behave like these, these these tacticians that as an obstacle comes their way, they react to it. And that's what expert sensing does. It gives you a high reaction time. It's all about reaction time. And they can, uh, or a low reaction time, I guess, like they, they can react quickly to any situation. So, for example, there is an explosion in the house and there's a bunch of fire everywhere. Oh, gosh. Well, the SI users will take a little bit to realize that there's a fire happening because SI introverted sensing has like this normalcy bias attached to it. But the SE users would instantly react. They would instantly take charge and they would instantly move on the fact that there's a fire in the house. There'd be like no time. They instantly handle it. But an introverted sensing user wouldn't. And the SE user would basically be the one that would save the introverted sensing sensors life in that moment because they're still dealing with that slow reaction time as a result of that introverted sensing normalcy bias so so yeah there's a lot of advantages and disadvantages the main problem with with uh, extroverted sensing is that usually se users can't even comprehend the concept of what if the reason is is because extroverted sensing is about what is it has nothing to do with what if and the only semblance of what if they get is what if this happens to me? They have no concept of uh, what if something happens to something else or someone else. It's all about what is, what is now, or what has someone else done, or what is someone doing? You know, it, like when they think about the past, they're looking at other people's past. They're not really concerned about their past. It's all about the past of someone else, basically. And that can get really frustrating, especially when you're trying to talk theory with uh, an extroverted sensing user, uh, especially if they're an SP type, which is the worst. They don't even think theory exists. Like theory isn't even real to them. And because it's not real to them, it's not real. And then they're going to accuse you of being unreal or accuse you of wasting their time because it's not real. And it's, it's, ooh, it's this floaty thing elsewhere that doesn't, it's not even real, even though their behavior is like insanely predictable. And you can predict their behavior very easily because they're just trying to go through life doing what they want and trying to find out what other people are doing instead of actually like being original with what they're doing themselves which a few of them can do, but quite frankly, the only ones that can really be original, in my opinion, are the ISPs, that's the ISTP and the ISFP, the craftsman and the artist respectfully, or respectively, because um, they're able to take a minute and step, take a step back. You know, every now and then I see some originality with the entertainer, which is the ESFP and their jokes, and sometimes maybe an ESTP in the new structure they're trying to build. But for the most part, 
it's more of, okay, I got all the information I need, but then I'm going to get stuck in this uh, web of, uh, or this repeating cycle of uh, doubt and decision-making and not make a decision. That's the problem with SE Hero. SE Hero gets this person stuck in a situation where they're just constantly gathering information about what everyone else is doing, but because their introverted intuition is in the fourth slot, they're insecure with what they want, and because of that, they don't make decisions. They just get stuck in an information gathering look with their expert in sensing, and they end up not making decisions. They end up not growing. They end up being too insecure. They're like, what if I want the wrong thing? And that's like really frustrating. You try to motivate them to do something, and you can't because they're too afraid to be motivated to do anything because they don't know what they want, and they're afraid they're going to want the wrong thing. It's like, come on, guys, wake up. Luckily, you don't have that problem with the ISTP or the ISFP. They always know what they want, and there's no guessing. The problem is, though, they can be like really, really controlling with their expert sensing and give people experiences they don't want to receive, and they can really make other people uncomfortable because of that. So it, it, it's a give and take. It's a balance. Not one experted sensor is better than others because each type is you know, compa more compatible or less compatible with other types. So it doesn't really matter. It's just about what the relationships are at that point in time. And if you're a type that's incompatible with uh, certain SE users and more compatible with other SE users, you got to be willing to basically pretend and try to become or look like at least a type that would be more compatible with you know, this extroverted sensor. I do that all the time. And to be honest, I've had some really interesting relationships, especially with sensing perceiver types, um, when I have done that. When I've more became like an ISFJ, you know, try to present myself as an ISFJ or an ISTJ to SP types, and they're able to integrate with me a lot more than if I was to actually just bring out my ego, my ENTP, which they can't stand. Because from their point of view, the ENTP shouldn't even be allowed to exist because it's not real. It's not based on physics at all. It's based. It's not based on what is. It's based on what if, also known as metaphysics. So anyway, uh, yeah, so expert in sensing in summary, uh, it's about people who live in the moment. They're forgetful. Uh, they're always trying to give someone an experience, always trying to show something or have something to show for what they've done. It drives them insane if they don't have anything to show for, anything physical or tangible with which uh, they have to show for their work. If they don't have anything that's tangible, it's just not real to them, and then they feel really bad about it. Uh, tangibility is everything to these people, and it's all about like what is happening and uh, or what isn't happening or what that person's doing or what that person has done so that they can figure out what they want. Um, it also gives them really good mechanical awareness. We already talked about that. They can fix cars, and uh, they really have the ability to manipulate the physical environment in ways that most people are not able to. And that's why most experted sensors are artisans, which is one of the temperaments. Uh, they are uh, the freedom-based creators. Experted sensing requires freedom. If you take away freedom from an experted sensor, then they're just going to rage. And that's another component of experted sensing, an introverted sensor. Like they can take the hits and then they'll wait till later to strike at an opportune moment, but an experted sensor has to react immediately to a negative situation. The reason is, and they have to do it with the full force, and that's why I have extroverted sensing rage. Why do they do this? Well, because an extroverted sensor has this problem where they think that if they don't react to it now, they'll forget about it later, and then they won't have the full energy to react to it. And it's basically them thinking like they're being treated like a little bitch, basically, which, or someone that won't be respected because they didn't react like a man would in that time. You know, there's a lot of gender bias towards extroverted sensing. A lot of women out there, I would say actually most women, because most women uh, out there, the majority of them are sensing judgers and sensing judger women prefer sensing perceiving men. And they believe that the ideal man is someone who has that mechanical awareness, that expert sensing capability just by default. So there's always this judgment or stigma about expert sensing being a more manly function, whereas women uh, ISTPs or women SPs, for example, end up being treated like they're emasculating because like they don't uh, because they're expert sensors and not SJ traditional women, basically. It, it's just stupid. Like people have a lot of gender bias with types and it's not really worth it. And it's just a waste of time. Uh, in reality, people need to stop being ignorant and realize that everyone is different and realize that 
just because they're not like you or just because they're not like the person who's most compatible with you does not make them invalid. It's stupid and it's ignorant. Stop doing it. If you're doing that, stop doing it, please. Like the world will be a better place if you stop doing that. And instead, encourage other people to actually like understand each other. Quit the gender bias bullshit. Like no one has time for that, seriously. Um, so yeah, uh, that's everything really for experted sensing. Just watch out for that SE rage. Let them react to something in the moment because they'll feel up, they'll lose energy. Um, and uh, it's kind of like that guy that sends you a text message. And if you don't respond immediately, he's not even going to tell you what he wants to say because he wants to have your full attention right there. Like, like expert sensing is all about getting other people's attention and showing them something or giving them an experience. So in that text message conversation, if you're not going to respond, they're not going to say anything. But if you do respond, it's only at that point where they know you're right there looking at the screen is they're actually going to write something out. It's really frustrating, especially for an introverted sensor like me. And I write out a whole bunch of text messages in a row and send it to them. And then they don't even read those texts because it's like, well, the energy is lost. There's no more energy in those texts because they're old texts. Something could have changed and, and they not be relevant anymore. So it's better for me to start over this conversation. No, actually, from an introverted censor's point of view, the texts that have been sent are valid, regardless of whether or not you've read them or not. Like, remember that, SE users. Like, seriously, don't be that guy that is annoying when you're sending texts to people because, like, there's people, half the populace out there really want you to read old text messages. And if you're too lazy to do that, well, that makes you disrespectful and a bad friend. So don't do it. So anyway, uh, thank you all for watching. If you found this video uh, helpful or uh, informational, whatnot, uh, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe. And uh, if you have any questions about extroverted sensing, go ahead and leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you with them. Anyway, have a good night. Later.